I am so excited to welcome you to our first episode of Sacred Authenticity. And very excited to introduce Darlene in just a moment. But first, I will um, let you know this concept, sacred authenticity, that we're going to be exploring today. Your relationship with yourself is the most important one that you'll ever have. And that journey begins with knowing yourself. Then even with that deeper connection, it can get really tricky to, to be yourself because so many of us have tried to be everything to everybody. And man, is that tension real? And, and we lose ourselves in that process. But when you honor who you are and the truth of your own experience, that is when you're connected to your peace and your power. So each week we're going to chat with a fabulous person and hear about their own journey, um, share some wisdom and practical tools. And here we have Darlene. Darlene Soshin, wonderful guest to kick us off. After a cancer diagnosis received the very day she arrived in a new city across the country 17 years ago, Darlene began an enormous spiritual awakening. Three days later, three archangels appeared to her in the middle of the night and reassured her everything will be okay. Have trust and faith and listen deep to your intuition. Guided to visit the bookstore the next day, Darlene found the books of Reiki, hands-on healing, and her life changed forever. Learning Reiki and completely healed from cancer, Darlene is now a multidimensional intuitive and healer, teaching others how to access their own gifts, develop a strong, unwavering daily practice, and allow their light to shine. Reiki master teacher Darlene facilitates traditional Japanese Reiki training, reads your magical Akashic records, offers mentor programs to therapists, caretakers, and frontline practitioners, and is soon to be a certified master alchemist. We came here to remember, it's now your time. Hell yes. Welcome, Darlene. <laughs> it's such an honor to be here with you, Steph. I, well, you have already piqued our interest in your story and have shared a, a really big part of your story for us. So tell us what the journey has been like to, to know yourself. Have you always had a strong sense of who you are? Has that been more of a discovery? You know, that that is such a beautiful question because I experienced this in so many people I hear, friends and clients. As a child, so many of us were connected to who that is and who that was. And for some reason in our childhood, there was somebody or something that had us turn it off. And in my case, that, that's what it was. When I was young, I saw spirits. Um, I had knowings. I knew who was calling when the phone rang. Just very strong intuition and connection to something uh, that was source or spirit. And I was told by a sibling, you know, he didn't know any better, um, that I was making up stories. It was my imagination and I needed to stop. And so it took <laughs> 30, 30 years of, uh, of suppressing myself and a cancer diagnosis to wake up. Yeah. Wow. So would you say that journey was linked with your, the cancer diagnosis and, I think and that so. spiritual awakening? So, so many of us have that, what, you know, that two by four time to wake up. Okay. You've been sleeping long enough and often it's, so, it has to be something traumatic enough. That's going to shake us up and, you know, we'll, and we have to really look at it. Yeah. So what was that like for you to, you know, to be, you said 30 years of suppressing yourself <laughs> and now you're like opening that closet door and seeing things that you're like, I don't, is this me? How does this relate to this way that I thought I have been all along? How did you reconcile all of those, like, and integrate all those things you were discovering about yourself? Well, that's a great question. Well, the First of all, I was a preschool teacher for 25 years. So uh, I everything that happens, I try to see as a game and in a playful spirit. 
And as it comes in, I'm like, oh, this is just something else I get to play with. Uh, so I don't make it too traumatic of an experience. I just look at it, you know, through the eyes of a child with, you know, curiosity. And because it was 30 years of suppression, I'm like, uh, whatever shows up, I'm game because I was quiet for too long. So it made the, the opening, the coming out of the spiritual closet that much easier because it was for so long, I realized I wasn't having fun because I make it fun. So I think that's what's easier for me is, is seeing it that way. Oh, I love that so much. Something I have struggled with, and I know I'm not alone in this, is like just taking myself so freaking seriously and taking everything so seriously. But man, being able to bring that spirit of playfulness into something as serious as who am I and what kind of life am I living? That's really powerful. It is. Yeah. And definitely through the eyes of a child, I see everything. Uh, and, you know, it could be our, our astrology sign. It could be also our human design. So what I always say to people, if there's something that you're struggling with, you know, something about your personality or something you can't come to terms with, or you see something in somebody else, I would always recommend having a human design uh, reading with somebody because then you get in touch with who you, it's another way to get into your authenticity. Who did I come here as? What, what are my strengths? What can I work on? Uh, what are my... Uh, opened chakras and centers. So, you know, what are my closed? And when you look at yourself, your human design or your, your blueprint, you get a, a deeper understanding rather than guessing and longing to be something else or somebody else. It, so I would highly recommend anybody do that, a human design reading. It is, it's so empowering, right? And, and and we're so different. We're wildly different in how we experience things. So I found it very empowering to understand my own energetic blueprint and, oh, hey, okay, this is how I can like support myself as right. I am. So definitely, like that's the biggest clue right there is how is how, how am I designed? How is that different from other people so that I can't expect to be like him or her? How, you know, how can I look at, at developing and fostering my own strengths and looking at uh, what aren't my strengths so that I don't, you know, I, I'm not disappointed in myself. There's just, yeah, there's so much to see and find out about your energetic self. And that's the best, that's such an incredible way of, of respecting yourself and taking care of yourself is learning more about that. Exactly. And so like we're always evolving too, right? And and learning more about ourselves if we're if we're interested in, in knowing. So how do you tell us how you navigate that? Like especially I know you're very busy. You have tons of things going on. So how do you stay connected? Like day to day, how do you stay connected with like, how the hell am I doing? And is, are all of these things still, you know, resonating with me? That's, that's a great question. Um, sometimes too many things are going on. So really what I do every day, uh, and it's essential to stay um, healthy and mindful uh, is a daily practice. And that doesn't mean that it's the same every day, but it's the, the commitment and the devotion to myself every day. I'm going to take this time and what is it that will work for today? So grounding is almost every, is absolutely every day, grounding my body into the earth. However, the process might look different. Um, and going out, making sure I'm outside every day, whether it's raining or cold or whatever the weather is. So that's, that's where I find the human connects the most quickly uh, and with the most ease to themselves is when they are outside connecting with earth, earth energy. So yeah, doing, doing that every day 
is how I stay <laughs> sane <laughs> and thrive. You know, it's so a lot of us in our culture live uh, really just for survival. A lot of people and don't even realize it that they're in just this daily mundane routine. So yeah. if you if you do have a daily practice, you'll start to recognize where you might have unhealthy patterns because in a daily practice, you'll start to, you'll be acknowledging what is it that something feels out of alignment. Yeah. And adding nature to that is just like a powerhouse because, <laughs> because of that, the grounding and freshness and clarity that, that can come with that. I'm so excited that we're in spring now in Northern Minnesota. So I'm coming <laughs> off of many months of frigid cold and, and can actually put like my bare feet in the grass again. And it feels amazing. Yes. <laughs> that, that, that weather. Yep. So Darlene, you have, you like, you've had this, this journey and, and, and clearly have, have learned so much about yourself. So like, why does it matter? Can you tell us how, how this knowledge and this connection and this devotion to yourself, as you described it, how, how has that made your life better? How has that allowed you to, you know, make a different choice or do something differently that ultimately feels better for you? Stepping out of conditioning. We, we come here and culture tells us what to do. Family tells us who to be. Um, and so we already, before we're even born, there's expectations and projections placed on us. So I've spent um, a few years ago, I found a modality called access consciousness and it works with dissipating and first acknowledging and then dissipating those energies that the conditioning um, has informed us with and being clear what's mine, like on a soul level and what was cultures and what was brainwashed or you know, wh what I was indoctrinated with that right there. So when you separate yourself from, I don't want to say separate, when you're clear about what thoughts and beliefs you have that you are told and what thoughts and beliefs are your soul, it's clear, it, it's, it's positively clear which choice is in alignment with your soul. Because it's, it's a gut feeling or it's a knowing depending on how you receive your information you know, from spirit. Is it physical? Is it a knowing? Um, so when I'm clear, I'll ask questions every day. Is this mine or someone else's? If it's if there's a you know a thought or a belief that that's been plaguing me, I'll stop and I'll ask: Is this mine or is this someone else's? And I'll get a clear knowing. Oh, this was conditioning from kindergarten. Like sometimes I'll even get the initial time that that belief was given to me or planted in me, yeah. and I'm able to then to, oh that that's out of alignment with my soul. And how how do you know? In many cases, illness. Um, depression, anxiety, when you don't feel like you're lit, you just know, like there's something that you know inside of you that you're not living your true path. That's yeah. when you know you're in illness is a big one in, in our culture. Uh, everything, when we're not in alignment, it's these energies turn into something physical to wake us up. <laughs> yeah. That two by four you were talking about earlier. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, like, man, that's a lot. But then you look at, like, it doesn't end there. You, you, you take that knowing and you act on it. You, you speak up for yourself or you, you know, you say yes or no. And, and, and one of the really challenging parts is especially if let's say people are used to you acting one way for 30 years. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're like, um, hell no, that doesn't, that does not align with me. Right. Um, can you, can you, um, uh, how would you encourage others who are experiencing that tension of like, I know what is right for me, but how the hell can I like speak that or navigate that when, you know, I don't feel 
going to be accepted, or maybe I don't even accept that part of myself. Right. Yet. Which is often the case. People not accepting that of themselves because of so many years of being told that's wrong or that's yeah. not, you know, the mainstream way. <sighs> Let's see. Um, connection. So also realizing that no matter what choices we, we make, someone's not going to like it, right? Um, and when we make our choices, our life changes and that will affect especially our relationships. So relationships are going to change and that's it's a fact of life, right? No matter what. Um, and the more we step into who we truly are, those who have known us a while won't, won't know who that person is perhaps. Some people will receive it, others won't. And what I would first, what I do first say to people is find, uh, when you have a connection to yourself, it makes it easier. Um, so again, that daily practice, tuning in and connecting to the love you have for yourself, the love that God has for you. Um, and then from that space, ask to be shown connection to others. Who is it that I can be myself with? And start there. So as we are receiving ourselves for the first time, Having someone to do it with really helps navigating it much more easy um, and fun. Uh, and so, yeah, I'd recommend, you know, first connecting with self, with spirit, with your heart space. And that that's often through meditation at first. If this is new for somebody and they don't know anyone else they can talk to. Uh, so first connect through self into your heart. That can be done um, in meditation. I use Joe, Joe, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza's work. Um, and then find others to connect with. So first self and then others. Or first God, then self, then others. Yeah. And isn't that so backwards from what <laughs> many of us have been taught to do, which is others first, period, in some cases? So, oh I my love, gosh. Yep. so I love how you talk about like the daily practice because man, it really is a practice. It really is a practice to come to yourself first and start there. It's yeah. And it's often starting for some people, a brand new routine, habit, pattern. Uh, and sometimes that means letting go of other patterns and habits that weren't serving us. Uh, and wake up every day. What is it that I can do to contribute to my path today? Always be in the question, just like a kid, right? Kids are always asked, why is the sky blue? And um, ask more questions. Ask, that's it. Be childlike wonder, live life through the eyes of a child. Wake up every day. What is it that I can do today to contribute to my own health? and to others. And guess what? When you contribute to your own health, it's automatically going to contribute to the other, to others around you, to your loved ones. Uh, thank you for that, for that spirit of playfulness <laughs> that you keep bringing to it because, <laughs> um, yeah, that is so important. We can, you know, especially with like, oh, a daily practice or meditating today, like, you know, I, you can just, classically like build it up into this big thing that becomes so unapproachable there's no way you could do yeah. it and it's you know it doesn't need to be that it can be two minutes it can be you know you can keep it simple and certainly keep it fun absolutely fun. <laughs> right there's no rules well the only rule is that it, in some way you're devoting that time to yourself and I hear all the time you know people say but I don't have you know I have this and this is going on and um, I have the dog to feed and the kids to, you know, take care of. So Abraham Hicks talks about all that is required to start is 17 seconds a day. That's it. I love that. And, and from there, I mean, it just naturally and organically increases. But I think the idea behind that is that it, there's no pressure. You know, it, the uh -huh. idea to get started is to do something that won't cause stress or though that won't totally put you into trauma if you're needing to change patterns. Seven, start with 17 seconds. What does that look like? 
and you know, it could be petting your dog. It could be just sitting for a few minutes, um, reveling in the peace and quiet before the kids wake up, going outside, listening to the birds chirp. It doesn't have to be something so structured and standard or spiritual, you know, it, whatever 17 seconds looks like that will completely shift your heart space. Yeah, I'm thinking of like some of the most powerful moments I have are if I'm just like walking around my house, you know, thinking about what I'm doing next and I don't know. And I have this moment of, oh, I don't know what I need to do right now. And oh, I see the couch right there. And I just sit down on the couch for just a minute and I don't do anything. I just sit there for a second. Those are some of the best moments where it's like just unplanned, no agenda. I'm just actually allowing myself to, to take a breath and that's okay. And that's it. That's really the secret. Yeah. The flow and listen. Yep. Well, yeah. Darlene, how would you like to encourage people on their journey of being powerfully being who they came here <laughs> to be? finding what, what brings you joy, what lifts you up. Uh, and what lights you up and what, you know, that again, you know, that childlike wonder. Um, and when we realize, especially those of us who are here to help take care of others, you know, but being in service, when when you realize that underneath this, this is sort of a way to hack that pattern or that habit or that belief that others come first, this will hack it. When you realize when you take care of yourself first, automatically everyone around you, you'll be doing your service to them when you first take care of you. That's the number one way to take care of somebody else is to take care of yourself. So that's, that's the big hack for the day. <laughs> I have two young children and I can attest to that. It is not selfish to take care of yourself. It makes you better. Yeah, you have to, you really do. Gosh, thank you so much for joining me today, Darlene, and sharing your story with us, sharing your wisdom and your insights. I love to help people make connections. And so I want to encourage you watching, if you feel any, kind of special pull toward Darlene, reach out, send her a message. And, um, and those are the little, those little nudges that we absolutely want to respond to and honor when we, when we hear that little voice. So um, please reach out to Darlene and um, make that connection if it feels right. And we will see you here next week for another episode of Sacred Authenticity. Thank you, Steph. Thank you, Darlene. Have a beautiful day, everyone.